Seeing no further introductions, it is now time for members' statements. The member from Carleton, Mississippi Mills. Mr. Speaker, today I rise in the House to raise awareness among Ontarians about one of the cruelest moments in the history of humanity, the deportation of Crimean Tatars from Crimea in 1944, orchestrated by Joseph Stalin. Under the false accusations of collective collaboration between Crimean Tatars and the Nazis, the Soviet government evicted over 240,000 Crimean people from their homeland in order to destroy them as an ethnic group. Within months, half of them died of cold, hunger, exhaustion, and disease. After the illegal annexation of Crimea by Russia in 2014, the Crimean Tatars have been facing a new wave of violence and hatred. Their national leaders are banned from entering Crimea. Dozens of people were imprisoned during and shortly after the annexation, and many others are still missing. Mr. Speaker, I would like to reaffirm my support for Canada's position on this issue. As Prime Minister of Canada, the Right Honourable Stephen Harper said last spring, Canada will never recognize this annexation as being the genuine will of the Ukrainian people. Crimea is Ukraine, Mr. Speaker. Let us not forget the victims of the Soviet regime. Let us not allow such atrocities to happen again in the future. Slava Ukraini. Thank you. Member Stamets, the member from Hamilton, Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> Speaker, in five weeks, the Pan Am Games will open in Toronto, the largest event. The soccer tournament will be hosted in my home city of Hamilton. Some of North and South America's finest players will be playing there. You may have heard me from time to time question the management planning and spending around these games, and with good reason, Speaker, but have no doubt. I'm excited that the games are almost here. It has been 85 years since Hamilton hosted a major sporting tournament, the first Commonwealth Games, that, then known as the Empire Games. I'm, I'm proud that major international sport has returned to my city 85 years later. Last Friday, I attended an exhibition soccer game at the new Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton. The soccer and football stadium, although substantially delayed, will be home to the Hamilton Tiger Cats, an Ontario's premier CFL team. I was delighted to watch Canada defeat England, and their fine performance shows that our women's team will truly be going for gold this July. I hope that as many Ontarians as possible come to Hamilton this July to cheer them on. We, we as a province and as a community have invested a lot and an awful lot of time and money in the Pan Parapan Games. I hope that the facilities developed and the dreams kindled there, supported and nurtured so that we can our legacy that endures for decades coming al along. I welcome the athletes, the coaches, the families and the spectators of the Pan Parapan Games to Ontario, and I hope they have a time of their lives. They will find that the people of Hamilton are warm, gracious, and love their sports. Thank you. Thank you. To the member states, the member from Cambridge. Oh, thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise today and talk about an event in Cambridge from May 2nd. I was very pleased to attend the Cambridge Sport Hall of Fame annual induction ceremony in my riding. The Cambridge Sports Hall of Fame celebrates excellence in sports displayed by residents from around Waterloo Region. It's been a staple in Cambridge since it introduced the first class of inductees in 1997. I was thrilled to be asked to present certificates to the honorees and, uh, and again thank them publicly for serving as inspirational figures for my constituents. The inductees into the Hall of Fame for this year were hockey player Steve McKenna, Clarence Dolly Dolson, soccer player Robert Benedetti, ringette player Glenn Gaudet, and harness racer Casey Coleman. Two teams were also inducted, the Cambridge Winter Hawks, who won the Sutherland Cup in 2006 and 2007, and the 2007 Southwood Sabres senior boys basketball team. Speaker, I have raised several Southwood Sabres, so I can't resist saying today, go Sabres, go. 
Steve McKenna spent several seasons playing with the Los Angeles Kings, Minnesota, Minnesota Wild, Pittsburgh Penguins, and the New York Rangers. Glenn Gaudet coached a national ringette team in 2011 and led Ontario to gold medals in the Canada Winter Games three times. Robert Benedetti started for Team Canada at the Pan Am Games and was named Ontario Athlete in, the, in 1967. All of these athletes achieved great things in their sports. I was very glad, Speaker, to have the chance to honour them. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, earlier this afternoon, I introduced representatives from the City of Brampton's Fire Department. They are heroes in our community, people who put their lives at risk to save others. But today, they're here to recognize one of our colleagues as a hero for his work in saving lives. The member from Oxford had a tragedy in his riding when OPP safety officer Lori Hawkins and her family were tragically killed by carbon monoxide that had built up in their home. Since then, the member for Oxford, working with Laurie's uncle, John Janak, has made it his mission to try to prevent more tragedies like this. The member for Oxford introduced, can I call him Ernie? Yes. Ernie introduced a bill which would require carbon monoxide detectors in all of our homes. Thanks to his work, every home in Ontario with a fuel burning appliance or attached garage is now required to have a carbon monoxide detector. The Brampton Fire Department is here today because they've seen firsthand that this law saves lives. A Brampton couple, Fahid and Serena Dari Fassi, bought carbon monoxide detectors for their home because of the new law. A short time later, they were woken in the middle of the night by the detector sounding. The heat exchanger on their furnace had cracked and was leaking carbon monoxide. With the levels in their home, they might not be alive today if they hadn't installed the carbon monoxide detector. I'm pleased that the Brampton Fire Department has come to honour my colleague, especially as he celebrates his 20th anniversary as Oxford's MPP next Monday. And I want to add my congratulations and praise to all of the work that he has done and will do for the city. For the yeah. hey, Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Nickelbelt. Thank you, Speaker. Today I raise to reiterate what a raw deal Sudbury Downs got from this cash-trapped government. Before the Liberal wasted a billion dollars to save a few seats in Mississauga, Sudbury Down was a prosperous and popular racetrack, a racetrack that led farmers to growing hay, boarding and training horses, and even growing veggies for a local market, thanks to the income that the horses were providing. But when the Liberal government eliminated the slot at racetrack program in 2012, it was the beginning of the end. Sudbury Down tried and tried to get a five-year, even a four-year commitment from OLG, a commitment needed to attract horses and breeders to Northern Ontario, but to no avail. This led to all related business to weather on the vine. Why, Speaker? Because this government and the OLG want casinos. Their greed stink of desperation. The OLG exists to raise money for the government and to save the public good. This government doesn't understand that although the minute the slot machines rolls off the assembly line in China and gets plugged in, sure, it adds to the bottom line, but it doesn't create value added. It doesn't serve the public good. By contrast, when a horse pulls around the last bend and sprints toward the finish line, behind it are trainers, breeders, veterinarians, jockey. A hundred real job in agricultural areas of Nickel Belt. It is disappointing that our agricultural premier can't understand that, although she promised just that three years ago. Thank, Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this week, I joined my colleagues on the front lawn of the legislature to mark Italian Heritage Month, recognizing the important contributions and achievements of Italian Canadians. Ontario is home to more than 1.3 million people of Italian heritage, including a few thousand in Kitchener Centre. These immigrants began arriving in significant numbers in the early 20th century to work on farms and factories and mines. But it was after these 
Second World War that a huge wave swept in from regions with names such as Lazio, Abruzzo, Friuli, and Calabria. These war-impoverished immigrants came looking for opportunities and a peaceful place to build a new life. Among the hundreds of thousands who poured in were my own parents back in 1957, and I just introduced you to them. Newly married and just 23 and 25 years of age, they had about 50 bucks in their pocket, did not speak the language, had little education, but they were ready to work and to contribute. Their story is similar to Italian immigrants that worked hard in this country. They bought a house. They raised children. They grew an awesome garden in the backyard, which still features a fig tree today. Food, wine, and familiar songs are part of what connected them to their beloved Italia. But what distinguishes them as part of the narrative of Ontario's story today is their unmistakable achievement of helping to build this province. Mr. Speaker, voglio dire auguri a tutti le persone che sono italo-canadesi durante il mese di giugno e viva Italia! Grazie. The, the member statement is a member from Niagara, West Clambrook. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, a um, constituent of mine had always been afraid to fly. Planes terrified her. That is until her five year old son, Barry, goaded her one day to get up on a plane for a test run. And now, since Private Bill 20 passed this morning, and I'm thankful with support from all three parties here in the legislature, they're going to name an airport after her. Take you back that day in 1948, she was 37 years old, and on that first flight, the, the bug bit her, Speaker. After she went up with her five-year-old son the next day, without telling her son or her husband, she went back to the airport and took flying lessons. Before you knew it, she was the first woman in Canada to fly in international air races, one of the first Canadian women to hold a commercial air license, the first Canadian woman to fly a helicopter solo, and the first to hold an airline transport license. She won a National Aviation Reporting Prize. She blazed trails for women in flight right across Canada and North America. And that's not it, by the way. She also was the first female counselor in the town of Pelham. She, with her husband, Charles, ran a car dealership in Welland. She was an equestrian, a musician, an artist. She's published four books. Here's the happy news, too. She turned 104 just a couple weeks ago. Dorothy Rungling, by name. Now 104, she doesn't quite fly as much as she used to, <laughs> but because the bill passed with all party support, I'm pleased to say that the Niagara Central Airport will now be the Dorothy Rungling Niagara Central Airport. I thank members for the support, an historic day in the town of Pelham and Peninsula, and I thank Cindy Forrester, member for Welland, who's been a big supporter of this bill as well. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. My goodness, we're all happy. The uh, <laughs> member from Trinity Spadino. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to recognize and celebrate Portugal Day. Although officially observed only in Portugal, Portuguese citizens and immigrants throughout the world celebrate this important holiday. The day commemorates the death of national literary icon Luiz de Camões on June 10, 1580. Camões, that's right. Thank you. Uh, in Toronto, over 200,000 Portuguese Canadians celebrate by holding a multitude of events surrounding the date of June 10th. The week-long festival ends with the Portugal Day Parade on Dundas Street in the area known as Little Portugal. The parade ends near Tunis Bellwoods Park, where concerts, cultural events, and other activities take place. The Portugal Day Parade is Toronto's third largest street festival and was, one, was the first celebrated in 1966. This is a much anticipated uh, celebration in my writing of Tunis Spadina and in MPP Christine Martin's writing of Davenport. Portugal Day dem uh, demonstrates our cultural diversity in Toronto and is an excellent opportunity for us to celebrate our multicultural heritage. I invite all members of this House and all Ontarians to join in celebration of Portugal Day and join us on June 10th to raise the Portugal flag outside the legislature. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members' statements. The member from Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today to talk about the wonderful seniors of our province. This June marks the 31st anniversary of Seniors Month in Ontario, and it's a time for us to recognize and celebrate the remarkable impact that seniors have had on all of our lives. 
It's also a time to think about how we can assist and support our seniors after they have given us a lifetime of service. Building a greater understanding of seniors and their needs is one of the best ways that we can express our appreciation for what they have done for us and what they are still doing today. Seniors are deeply involved in our communities, and their contributions benefit Ontarians of all ages. Mr. Speaker, our government is committed to providing care and support to residents at every age. That's why I'm proud that Ontario is working hard to develop a comprehensive strategy for Alzheimer's and dementia care. It's an issue that touches so many people's lives, and it's one of the most pressing and serious matters facing seniors today. Celebrating Seniors Month raises awareness about the difficult challenges and adjustments our ageing residents experience every day. And it's not enough just to be aware of these difficulties. We must invest our resources to meet the needs of our elderly citizens. I look forward to taking part in many of the events this month, Mr. Speaker, and I would like to offer a final thank you to all the seniors in this province and across the country for all they have done to build Ontario up. Thank you very much. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It is now time for a report.